Should you incorporate short-term slash vacation rentals into your portfolio? Well, I want to welcome our audience today to episode one of We Are TPM. I'm Kyle Teixeira. I'm here with John Teixeira, and we're uh, looking forward to having a discussion. Well, hello there. Well, let's get into it. So we're going to be discussing today, should you include short-term rentals in your rental portfolio? And vacation rentals, right, Kyle? That's part of this too, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Short-term vacation rentals, um, you know, Airbnb with the token word. <laughs> so let's get into it. I think we should uh, start with the different types. Um, you know, there's a lot of different types out there, but uh, you know, we've categorized the types of short-term rentals into about four categories. So, And we've dabbled in about all of these, so I'm really anxious to share this with everybody, Kyle. Do you... Um, you know, one of the first ones that we have falls into our first category, right? One of the first ones that we brought on to our portfolio when we started doing this several years ago. And that was just a local home, right? That serves to substitute a hotel for somebody that comes in to visit family or maybe go to a a local event, right? Yeah. Being able to house a big group versus having multiple rooms at a hotel, that kind of thing. So, And I guess people, this has become more popular because A, because the apps that they use are easier, right, to, to, to book these types of, of rentals. But people, if they're going to go for three, four, five days, they're starting to recognize that booking a home where that has a kitchen saves them a ton of money, doesn't it? I mean, I don't have to go out to eat for three meals a day. I can bring bring food in and cook some meals there and just save a lot of money on a family trip especially for large groups yeah more or less not thinking about what a hotel doesn't have and what they'll need to bring but more Mm -hmm. what a what a home already set up as a home will have for them and not having to think too much about the difference between their home and their hotel so right (laughs) what what else what other kind of short-term rentals do we want to share with everybody well probably the most the one we talk about the most that we target is a property with a purpose or an experience. So and that, that just means giving a property a purpose for people to stay there, not just having, um, you know, hotel aspects where they just need a place to stay, but actually staying at our property for the reason our property is set up for. So that could... It could be just about anything, huh? Depending on what you're trying to do, depending on where it is. Um we're trying to set one up right now that has a wedding theme. So it's based on supporting weddings, but we've got another one that is here for it's themed for baseball, right? So it's, it's purpose is really geared toward bringing people in from the, from the baseball community. So it, that could, that could be a lot of different things. Yeah. It's more targeting an audience. You know, you're not always targeting the audience in the hospitality industry or just for, a, you know, a big group local home, like the person we said, um, for this, this category, we'll call it, you're targeting a spe- specific audience that you want to stay at your property. That kind of gets into, we'll call it a third category of support homes for a larger venue. Um, it may sound the same, but what we're talking about is being in the surrounding areas of, large venues, you know, let's, you know, we're in the DFW area, so let's use AT&T Stadium. Um, that brings in big crowds for a lot of different reasons, not just the Dallas Cowboys, but pretty much all year long, they have different events, and big, big events at that venue. Um, that's just one example. So you'd have a, we call it a support home around there that, you know, kind of like first category can be a local hotel home, but also is targeted towards the purpose of that venue. So kind of combining the first and the second. Yeah, I love it. And these are these are slam dunks, aren't they, Kyle? If you can find a great property that, that matches your financial needs and your investment goals, and it happens to be next to um, a really busy convention center or a stadium like AT&T Stadium, like you mentioned, or you know, just whatever it is, something that just has a lot of events throughout the year, that's a slam dunk. That makes the, your decision a lot easier if you if you can do that. You, yes, that's that's the that's the desire there. So, um, and and we we package these into four categories. Really, not because they're the only four categories out there. We're we're really targeting here the um, what what would make a good short term rental and having intentions in what we're doing. So. Yeah, absolutely. 
So what's the last one, Kyle? The last one is kind of my favorite one. <laughs> and the more obvious one that people would jump to um, being vacation homes or second homes. Right. So, and you know, you have some personal experience with this. You... I do. So, you know, I, it, we, I've, I've bought homes. I've got two condos in Orange Beach, Alabama. So one of them I have, I'm, I'm actually p- partners on one of them and, and I don't have partners on the other. And, and part of that is I you know I love it there right it's kind of my happy place so kind of what I want people to be inspired by here is there's nothing wrong with going out and buying something in your happy place like I I like to call it right whether that's Orange Beach or you know wherever it happens to be it could be Costa Rica it could be Telluride or Broken Bow or there's a lot of different places people like to call you know, their getaway, right? Mm-hmm. Their getaway from life, their getaway that makes them, I don't know, think about like life a little differently. And that is so important for our human soul. And so if you could buy something there as an investment property and use it at, as a second home and then still generate income from it, that's just a win-win, isn't it? It is a win-win. And, you know, that's that's really one of the benefits of, of- of asking this question and making the decision. Um, but it's, it's not necessarily the benefit of this category. We, you could have vacation homes all over the place that you don't even want to be in, but you know, the vacation home aspect of it is targeting an audience that like you said, has that that location is a dream spot or, or a vacation spot. So um, with the added benefit that you, <laughs> you could target, you could be your own audience that you're targeting. So. Yeah, absolutely. And so, you know, I want I want to Kyle. I hope you. I, I want to inter- inject something here to to anybody that's listening right now, and they're thinking, "Well, wow, I really would like to buy something," and you know, wherever it is. Um, I just I want I I network with these agents that work in all of these markets all over the world, especially these vacation home markets. I. I go out of my way to reach out to them, network with them on a regular basis. So if there's a spot anywhere in the world that you are thinking about buying an investment property, if something we say or somebody else has said that inspires you to do that, I just encourage you to reach out to me. I might know the best person to help you get that accomplished. And one of them may even be the person that I convinced you to buy two in Orange Beach, right? Absolutely. <laughs> that takes some work. So Absolutely. let's get into the, the pros and cons of, of doing really just short-term rental and including it in your portfolio. I love it. You know, the, the first one is probably the first um, really the positives, right, about for doing this is probably the most obvious and the thing that people – want to talk about the most and that is the money now we call it cash flow right we call it that's kind of the technical term for it but um the money how much money am i going to make every month right um kyle you and i have been doing this for long enough now with short-term rentals to know deep in our heart that we make far more on those short-term rentals on a monthly basis than we do on those short-term rentals. Yeah, and I mean, when you're talking about appreciation, it's it it's not far more. It's when you combine that with the the you know we like to call it massive cash flow um, that gets at, tacked on to that appreciation, which you know makes it grow and ma- makes the investment analysis way <laughs> way deeper um, because you get monthly. We we call it cash flow because it's your monthly money in your pocket. You know, it's what flows. On a regular basis, appreciation isn't realized until you sell or otherwise, right? And the the massive cash flow versus the non-massive cash flow on a, on a long term. It's more of a comparative term, um, but that's what spikes pretty yeah. much everyone's interest. That's getting into it and being able to have these added benefits on top of money. So I would just want to, Kyle. I want to share an example of this cash flow, okay? Because we have a, some great examples, don't we? Um, I've got a home. Um, I'm thinking about one of my personal homes that I have that I used to rent on a normal basis for $1,900 a month. Mm-hmm. Um, Kyle, modern sports theme. I'm putting you on the spot here. What do you think my average is on, on that, that I average over the course? I know it's different. Every month is going to be different. But if you had to tell me an average of what what we get monthly from that 
that particular home, what what would you say that is? Well, when you look look at 1900, you're talking about collected rents. And if we're going to look at the short-term rental cash flow, we're looking at collected revenues. And in that aspect, it's anywhere from four to, you know, nine thousand dollars in a month and and i i know that's a big range but that's really the low season versus the hot season um because for that specific rental there is a you know, modern sports theme sports season is a little bit hotter um so so an average i don't want to six thousand dollars a month would be a good average you think maybe more like four or five huh you're looking at your uh, statements a lot aren't you yeah yeah no. i am <laughs> good average yeah about I'd say forty-five, five thousand is a. You know, I like to be conservative, and then yeah. surprise you when you yeah, actually yeah, yeah. go look at that statement. Because <laughs> really, that's more than double what you're gonna make. What I'm gonna make normally, right? Now, granted, we're gonna get into some of this, but the cash flow is just enormous. That's why we call it massive cash flow, right? It's just enormous compared to compared to your normal everyday rental. Yeah, and specifying cash flow a little bit more. That's the actual. Fl- flow into your bank account essentially right and when you look at how, what the house costs you you got to consider the mortgage the deductions and that cash flow portion on even the the lower amount is the difference between those deductions and, and what's left so we're really having a what we're talking about is a big jump in what's left versus um what's collected yeah got it net versus gross yeah so let's move on to some of the other things. I want to get real, get get one of the obvious ones out of the way because you already mentioned it, and that is appreciation. So when we talk about appreciation, we're talking about the the amount at which the value of the home grows. Now, it doesn't matter whether this is a short-term rental or a long-term rental. You get appreciation. You get appreciation in your own home that you live in. But I just wanted to recognize that while you're looking at should I do this or not, you are still – you're still reaping the benefit of that appreciation while you own that home, regardless of how you're using it. Mm-hmm. Kind of the time is money aspect. Uh, time makes it go up. So. Yep. Um, all right. So, Kyle, what's next? We've got a couple more here. What, what, which ones do we want to share with, with people? Um, one, one that is less obvious, less known that I like to call it advertise, but really just just tell people in certain situations is adding a business and commercial value to your asset. You know, anything that has value in this world only has value because somebody is willing to pay it or or there's a market for it or or whatever. Doing this actually creates a business from your property. It creates, call it a, you know, Airbnb reputation, VRBO reputation. Um, And if that's being operated and it has generated revenues and all that, just like any other business, you can sell that business portion based on its its revenues and all that. So you have a property's asset with a property's value that you can now essentially sell to another person trying to run an Airbnb business, which is a very, very much growing industry and and it has a market out there. so say your home's worth 500000 but if it's an Airbnb that's ran for a year and has a good reputation, you can now sell, sell it for you know, 600000 or 700000 And I'm not saying those are guaranteed figures, but that's the, that's the added value. Yeah, we definitely want to be careful about not throwing figures out like that. But I mean, it's just to demonstrate what you're talking about is you're now selling a, bu- a business that's got a commercial value with revenue in mind, right? And when you get a loan, when you get a mortgage on a rental property or your, you know, your lender might come to you and ask you for, you know, a lease, right? So that they can take into account the amount of rental income and offset your expenses, right? Well, when they do that on an Airbnb, especially when we have some experience with it and we've got one or two years on this unit to give them it shows a lot better, right? It shows uh, on the books, it shows a ton better and just makes it easier to get that higher value. Yeah. And what you just mentioned is actually a previous con that is now a pro because I, it was a concern of some of my investors that their yeah. lenders wouldn't let them buy more properties right. because it doesn't have a lease and all that. And while that was true, mostly while we start, when we started doing this, I probably anymore. put that in the, in the con category. It's now a pro because lenders are actively taking that on like a three month basis, you know, not even a two year basis like they used to have to do for a business asset um, 
mainly because they see the massive cash flows as well as revenues. And they're like, well, if you can show that for three months, I don't think we need to fret. So, so three months is kind of the standard that you got to show a three month. Uh... I won't put any lender to it. I just <laughs> know the last experience with a lender in, in that situation, it was three months. Yes. So, and you got to have a good lender willing to do it. So they're not all up with the times. So a couple more here, Kyle, that we've we've listed here, and then we're going to get to some negatives, right? We're not going to just talk about all positives. We're, we want to make sure that you've, you're really informed on, on what the positive and negatives are. We already talked about one of these, and that is just per, being able to personally use, and this is really thinking more about a vacation property, right? For being able to personally use it. So if I buy a rental property and I lease it out for a year, I can't use it, can I? I can't go just intrude on my tenant and say, hey, do you mind if you know you leave for the weekend so I can come in and enjoy the place? I mean, that's not happening. But with this scenario, I can block out time to bring my family to, in my case, I bring I block out time for Orange Beach. I got I got time booked in May for us to go enjoy one of our one of our uh, condos in, in Orange Beach. That's yeah, and it's it's you know it's one of those things where you don't give up possession of your property. You know, you know, when you give up a lease, you're legally giving that tenant possession. You don't have possession. You can't go use it whenever you want. You know, um, vacation rentals. You're having guests. It doesn't legally give them possession. I mean, it does in in varying degrees. But um, like you said, you can use it personally. You can make decisions. And getting into another pro, you can use. You can constantly you can constantly upkeep it, but you can also have condition checks where, you know, you sign a one year lease. Um, you, you know, you can have checks on your property in a one year lease, but in a short term rental, you can check it weekly, daily. Every time it's turned, it's getting eyes on it. it there's no concern that, you know, the, your property is being overused or underused or whatever you want to call it. Um, so you got eyeballs on it frequently yeah. is really the point, right? Um, and it's some of the concern with a lot of investors with, with their portfolios is where is this going to end up after a bad tenant or even a good tenant in some situations? Yeah, we've taken over properties like that, huh? On long-term scenarios where the tenant maybe was paying, you know, not enough rent and they were in there for seven years and they knew they had it good. So they weren't saying anything about the condition of the property. Homeowner or previous property manager never went to check the property and here we come taking it over and we've got a pile of messes on our hands, don't we? Yeah. And so that's never going to happen with your short-term rentals, which is why we put that in in our positives. It's never going to happen to a degree that it gets gets that bad, that's for sure. So <laughs> you can only you can only trash a place so bad in a <laughs> week's time, right? Well, and yeah, it seems like we're getting into some cons, so we got to be up front with people, so Yep. And let's do it. Let's do it. Let's get into it, Kyle. Well, getting into being upfront is the upfront cost. I mean, that's uh, you call it a con. It's a it's an upfront investment. It's a, you have to put in most cases you have to put some upfront money to get it set up as a home, um, fully set up as a home. Silverware, furniture, you know, down to the toilet paper, paper towels, all that stuff. Decor. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> all of it. There's Things you would never think about. Board games. <laughs> the 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 part every tenant you put in has to think of when they get there. You know, you're doing that. You're setting it up for people to live in. So that and that comes with cost. Um, sometimes that's a pro though if you're just trying to walk away from a fully furnished or your entirely set up home, which has happened as well. So um, that one kind of goes both ways. But now, and a lot of times, just let people know, a lot of times when you buy homes in markets that are notoriously vacation markets, right, they're already set up like this. Most of these homes are being sold, furnished with all the cookware and everything included in it. So if I buy something here in Mansfield, right, that's probably not the case, right? But if I buy something, you know, in, I keep, we keep using Orange Beach because it's my happy place, sorry. If we buy something there, you know, a condo on the beach, most likely we're buying it furnished with all the utilities and everything, or sorry, not utilities, all the cookware and utensils that are required for guests already in it. And then you just got to Add to it. Make sure you've got everything right. Yeah, and make it yours. But don't kid yourself and act like that's not a. There's no upfront cost rolled into yeah, that. Yeah, there so absolutely always is. is. Always is. 
So. What else? What else should we warn people about before they decide to do this? Um, you got shorter timelines, um, shorter timelines, shorter tenancy timelines, because you know it's a short-term rental. Um, and I guess we put that in the cons category just because you have a different guest, you have different different situations on a on a regular basis where you wouldn't have different situations on a regular basis in a long-term rental. Um, it's it's really comes down to uncertainty, right, Kyle? I mean, it's it's like with our with our lease. One year lease, we have this this level of certainty that over the course of the next 12 months, somebody's going to be there living there, paying rent. We don't have that with a short-term rental, even if we are booked out for the next four or five months. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, you know, any given month, you don't know exactly. You don't know exact figures on what's going to get charged that month, what you're going to collect that month. Um, there's levels of un- uncertainty there, but there are levels of uncertainty that, that fruit you know, good rewards. Pandemics, it's, hurricanes, the whole bit can happen, right? Yeah, yeah. And you can you can manage risk and manage those things as well. So. so one of the things that we wanted to talk about, Kyle, was the level of hands-on management. So obviously, if you're hiring somebody like us that's doing this for you and has the systems and stuff in place, then that that's the easiest way to do it. But if you're Thinking about doing this yourself, you, what you have to think about is the level of, if you well, if you've never done it before, the learning curve first, right? Second, the level of hands-on management that it takes to manage that property is exponentially higher than it is with a normal rental property. It is, it is, and it it depends on how well you do it. It actually makes it take less time. The which is where the learning curve comes mm-hmm. in. You know yep. the less efficient it is, the harder it gets. And that's yep. why you said it's an ex- exponential effect because it is. And it, it gets better over time and, and those things make a better experience for everyone involved. And that's really the key. We put it in the cons category because you don't have to do that on a long-term rental where you do on a short-term where you know, you're know constantly managing the guest experience. Right. Well, key. in my previous example, man, I've seen people just you know, set it and forget it with rental properties and never even think about that property or look at it. They accept, they get the rent every single month and right. Um, Hire a good manager and then you get rid of that con and you just, you're only right. looking at the pros, right? That's right. I love it. All right. So what, what about some of the other things here? We've, we've got, um, Expenses. I mean, you have more reoccurring expenses um, than you would in, in a normal rental. Then that's just for cleaning charges, for the, you know, supply, you know, supply restocking, and, and various things. Then that does increase the expenses, and ties into why you have increased income and, and as well. So. Well, no, yeah, but you 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 hit on this earlier. So while our revenue is higher, our expenses are also higher, right? So that example I used earlier, where I can rent something for $1,900 a month. I really don't have any expenses that go with that other than maybe a mortgage, insurance, and taxes, the normal stuff that goes with owning a home. But I don't have any additional expenses usually. Now, what expenses are we expecting to have with that short-term rental? Like, What are we talking about? Are we talking about hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars? That varies because the great thing about short-term rentals and hosting is you can you can change how you charge and what what how you collect income. You know you can pass most of these expenses on to the guest if you want, or you cannot and make make varying decisions on why to or not do that. Um, but you know the cleaning costs, clean you know getting a cleaner in any house. Those can, get passed on. Yeah. Right. We those. usually charge those to to a guest. But what other expenses do we have for? For the homeowner, like, you know, Wi-Fi, right? We got to pay for Wi-Fi. Yeah, utilities, yeah, electricity, Wi-Fi, utilities, gas, yeah. all the stuff that normally you don't have to pay for. Um, those do get used, and they do vary based on your guest. Um, lawn, lawn, lawn service. Lawn care, keeping the place nice, keeping, you know, decor up to date, Thing things get... All the extra things, yep, yeah. absolutely. You're staying right on top of things. You I'm got sure most can understand what those are because they spend them in their own house, right? Well, so instead, it's just being spent in a in a rental investment. Yeah, that's so, it. It's yeah. it's basically the expenses you have in your own home, mm-hmm. right? Um, because you're trying to make create an experience for, while somebody's coming and staying as your guest. You're trying to create that same experience. So, perfect. 
So good, Kyle. I mean, this that was, uh, I, I think that paints a really good picture. If somebody's out there thinking about whether they should do this or not, that's, those are pretty much, that's a pretty good picture of all the positives and negatives. If you're that type of person that thinks about the, the, from a pro con aspect and that's how you make decisions. Yeah. And you know, if you get really into the decision, that's where we, we start diving into these things with you and figure out what your pros and cons list is, uh, specific to your investment goals. So Kyle, let's talk about something that you actually coined while we were preparing for this. And that was the, the characteristics to set this up for success. If you do decide to do it, what, what do people need to know to make sure that they're successful? And, and I know the, the number one answer for you and I is hire us, right? <laughs> or hire a great property manager, whether it's us or not, just, you know, that's really the, the, well, I think it's important, you know, the characteristics for success, you say that that's our priority and that's more because we know that we've already been through all these growing pains yeah. and all that. And, you know, yeah. we wouldn't be setting you up for success by telling you to go start at ground zero. But the it it really gets into a lot of different things. But investor temperament is is huge. Right. And what I mean by that is having a relationship between. You know, if you're doing it yourself, that's one thing. But having a relationship between your property manager and you that that involves trust and is customer oriented is is extremely important because as the investor, you care about your revenues and your incomes. And as the manager, you care about your investors incomes and your revenues, but also the guest experience and as a whole that that is the concern that gets you revenues and profits and all that stuff. So having that understanding that you're doing hospitality and not just, it's just a uh, different business model, isn't it? It is. And it's, you're not just a landlord. Your, your primary goal is the guest experience and understanding that when things happen, maybe you take an initial loss to make sure you don't take huge losses throughout the year over something stupid. Right. Um, well, you know, you mentioned investor temperament. And I want to bring that back to something that I often say. It's just really simple. When I'm sitting at a kitchen table with some, with a maybe a husband and a wife, that they're thinking about doing this, or they're, they're think sometimes they're thinking about renting their own home. Right? There's a lot mm -hmm. of emotion involved in that, and this really plays into this short-term rental thing because not everybody is cut out to do this emotionally are they i mean like what i find is the most couples maybe you have one or the other that has the emotional temperament to be able to handle what's and what what is necessary and maybe the other doesn't and that's important to to keep that in mind it's very important and i don't want it to come off as judgment because we're not going to make that decision we never make that decision it's yeah. us presenting yeah, yeah, you yeah. with these facts and you you reacting emotionally to see if you know, if, if it's something you can't handle or, or whatever, because we're going to present you with the worst case a lot of the time so that you're prepared for it and then do our very best to never have make that happen. Right. <laughs> yep. That's really all property management. But in this aspect, we try to be really upfront from the beginning that you got to understand what you're getting into. So. So, Kyle, let's let's talk a, for a moment about one of the other characteristics that's necessary. And this really has more to do with. Um, the characteristics that needed between an investor and their property manager, if they don't have a property manager, maybe they don't need this as much, but uh, trust is really what I'm, what I'm getting at. Trust in this business is so important. Now it's important for us to, to gain that trust from our clients, right? To prove ourselves, to show our clients that we have their best interest at heart and that we're going to try to generate the most amount of revenue and take really good care of that asset for them, right? That's really hard for people. It takes a while with the short-term rentals, the level of trust that is required, again, like revenue, is exponentially higher. It, it Like they've got to let us make a ton of decisions for them, don't they? They on do, the fly. They do on the fly and they have to trust that we do it and that we won't affect their revenues because it all ties very strongly together. Reputation, you know, jumping to action, quick to respond, communication, all that stuff. It, it matters. It matters to the guest experience and it matters to the success. But there's also the 
the interesting benefit to it that you, there is a tool for monitoring that success and trust as well. And, you know, you have to have some, some mm. insight to what's going on, but you do have the ability of looking at guest reviews. You get to see what these guests are saying about your manager mm. and the host and, and the whole public eye can see what's going on there. So it's an accountability system too. Um, you can say all these things are happening, but if these reviews are coming in and repeating the same thing over and over again, then there's something to talk about, or, or maybe there isn't something to talk about. But the point is there's, there's a tool of, uh, I'll say solid, not just solidifying that trust, but building on it. Well, so. you said it, it's accountability, yeah. right? And, and in this consumer rating based economy that we're in, that's everything we do is that way, right? Every restaurant is judged that way. Every business is judged that way. People, gosh, we've had people walk in our business that knew, knew everything about us before they ever walked through the door and shook our hands. And that's just the world we live in right now in 2021. And in this business and this model that we're talking about today, it's so extremely important, which Bringing that back to trust, that's why they have to trust us or themselves to make quick decisions that may affect your short-term revenue but are going to impact your long-term revenue positively. Yeah, smart investing because, you know, we mentioned investor temper temperament and, you know, the trust where that ties directly into um, the guest experience. So, Kyle, you um, mentioned this before uh, kind of – it's really important that every decision we make, we're talking about all those little decisions we make, right? Every one of those decisions has to make us stand above the crowd, right? Starting with how we set the property up, how we theme the property, um, what's the purpose of the property, who is our audience, and how are we targeting them? Because there's several platforms to target these, these all of these properties, Standing above the crowd is kind of the guiding light for all of those decisions, isn't it? It is, and it's it's really a cumbersome statement to stand above the crowd. It's it, the crowd is, you know, review or when we're talking about reviews, reputation, and being on these these platforms, you could stand above the crowd on one platform and not stand above the crowd on the mm -hmm. other platform. And yep. if you have seventeen platforms, then the person really standing above the crowd is the average of all of them. You know that kind of thing. So casting the biggest net while standing the tallest is is really the best way to build um, a reputation b backed by a, a well and well-managed and efficient model that actually focuses on the guest experience so well, and that that involves intentional analysis too mm. so um, you got to make sure from the beginning that your your theme and all these things you're doing are going to have a demand and that you're supplying something that has a demand and that it's not in a saturated market if you want to make a smart investment. That really just comes down to data and experience and knowing what to look at to call it, evaluate your decision. Yeah, you're, Kyle, that's, that's a great point. And, and you're, what you're really talking about is if you're wondering whether a certain property is the right type of property to do this with, all you got to do is come to us and, and we plug it in and we've got the tools, don't we, to be able to do exactly what you just described and look at the market, see if it's too saturated near there or if there's a higher demand that, that, than there is supply and maybe it's a good time right now. Maybe it's a not good time for that for that particular property. Yeah, and that's that's really tools we have access to that most most people don't just because you know they're not doing this, it wouldn't be worth it to them, all that kind of stuff, but looking at that data regardless of how you get it is very important to making making your decision because if there is no supply then you may not be looking at data you have to use a lot of uh insight to know that the demand will come when you supply it because if you're competing with no one you have well, less to look at that's funny that you say that because you reminded me of something again while we were having a discussion about this very topic you reminded me of something and that leads into it really well is is you said to me, if they will build it, they will come. So if you're starting a market and you're putting a home somewhere where there is maybe, maybe you don't know what the supply is because nobody's had the guts to step out into that market yet with one of these short-term rentals. That's kind of your attitude a little bit, isn't it? Build it, they will come. Let's, let's give it a shot. 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, there's always ways to look at it. I mean, we, we shouldn't take that as just build it anywhere and they will come, but <laughs> you know, there's no Airbnbs no? in the area. Call the nearest hotel and be like, how booked are you on a yearly basis? So we're always, I mean, there's not enough rooms during this time, this kind of thing. All right. Well, there's demand, you know, there's always different avenues you can, you can jump into to, to give yourself the confidence in your decision when, when you're building it. <laughs> So I want to wrap up this question before we do like kind of to, to, to piggyback on that point a little bit is something that I always tell people when they're considering this, we're having a discussion with one of our clients about whether to turn one of their units into a short term rental or buy one. Right. And we always kind of end the conversation the same way. And that is, look, if something goes wrong, you decide you don't have the temperament for this. It doesn't work out. The demand wasn't as high as we thought it was. We need to back out of this situation. You still have a great property that you can rent long term, yeah, right? You, you have flexibility in your options. You know, you don't. You haven't committed to. I mean, you, you've committed to a certain extent, of course, but you can flexibly make the other decisions. You know, that you're not tied into a lease. You're not locked into um, a short term rental if you want to migrate to a long term rental. So. Buy something that has your backup plans solidified too. You know, if this doesn't work out, this the comps on this as a long term rental are great too. So you transition and, and it furnished. There. And when yeah. we when when we've rented things furnished, we've gotten several hundred dollars more per month for them, depending on you know the size and where it is. But but the those furnishings actually get you more money. So even those don't go to waste. And then you know what? There's something else that we haven't talked about, and that's um, corporate and occupational housing. It's kind of somewhere between short-term and long-term rentals, and we're not going to get into that today, but the point being, you have tons of options. If something goes wrong with the short-term rental option that you've chosen, it's not the end of the world. It is so quick and easy to back out of, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you have the right assistance, you know, you have the right people guiding you, and you can you can make that transition. You can make it effectively and not burn any bridges right that you set up um, i love it that goes oh, i love it maybe that'll take some of the fear you know sometimes people don't take action out of fear right the fear of the unknown and that's kind of what this is about this is just about helping to inspire and educate people about what the possibilities are and so hopefully through this discussion we've taken some of that fear and 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 unknowns out yeah but great things come from fear like you have and, and patience as well. Patience is key. You know, you got to focus on the customer experience, building a reputation and, and, and getting down those those first items. It's a process to starting out one of these things. So you, you get those those done and higher revenues come come with them. So right, right. have the right focus, I should say. So, hey, it's a business, right? So it should be treated like a business. It should be analyzed, set up, and treated like a business. And then ran with sustainable processes yep. that can be effective. So, Absolutely. Yep. So, Kyle, our question, should we include these short-term rentals or vacation properties in our portfolio? It sounds to me, you know, through this discussion, you and I definitely agree that you should. Yeah, yeah, we've we've proven that with our action that, that we we definitely believe that you should. Um, but also that you should intentionally, you know, not, not just making your entire portfolio short-term rentals all at once. Um, we'll give it a try, but making it a, a very intentional process that you analyze. And that is the, the key to your success in this avenue. Yeah. You know, I would say, I guess if somebody said, Hey, I've got X number of properties, how many do you think I should, you know, should we analyze how many of these? And I think the answer would be twofold. One, that's, really a case by case basis, right? That really is depends on the property and the investor, right? But it's also kind of like um, the same conversation a a financial advisor would have with their client while they're sitting there and, and asking whether they would like to go into growth funds or or more conservative or more more you know aggressive growth funds. Value conversation, yeah. Yeah. So it's the same thing. It's like, where are you on your track for investment? Are you your age, you know, and kind of just starting and you've got another 30 or 40 years to invest and, and, you know, or are you closer to my age where you're kind of in the middle or even more, you know, more mature where, 
where you got to start thinking in the next year to five years about winding it up, what you're going to do with it. I'm heading to Costa Rica. You know what I mean? And the, the great thing is it fits into all those timelines, right? I mean, it you does. Have, you have, if you're starting out, then you use the massive cash flows to, to build more conservative parts of your portfolio. On the other side of that, you have conservative parts of your for- portfolio. Throw the, throw the, get, get you some massive cash flow while you've been sitting on those, uh, <laughs> I love on, it. on I that long term portfolio. So it, it, anywhere in the spectrum is really, it's, it's a great time to take advantage of it because who knows in 10, 15 years if, uh, if corporations aren't stealing this avenue from us, you never know, right? So, <laughs> hey, well, look. They haven't been able to take it away from Uber and Lyft, so I, I think uh, I think this industry will, will will do just fine if we use that industry as as an example of what, what is to come. Um, and you know what? That's the other part about living in this time that we're living in. It is easier for us to pivot quickly right now, and the unknowns. You just get used to the unknowns more and they don't scare you as much. So I would just encourage you, you know, this is the world we're living in. What we presented to you today, you know, are the truths today. They may not be the truths tomorrow, but the world will pivot. Society will pivot and, and TPM will pivot how we need to, right? We will. And we've done it before and we've been doing it constantly. And we, you know, that's what got us into this industry. That's what got us through the pandemic successfully was still, you know, not taking any massive hits to revenue and, and getting our investors through it with us and coming out the other end with less supply and very high demand. So, you know, it, you, you have an intentional process to all those stuff and it, it generally rewards. And I love it. Kyle, I think we had a really good, great, productive conversation today. Hopefully this was helpful to anybody listening. And um, don't forget, wearetpm.com is a great place to go for more information. For You can find about information about all of our services there. But more specifically, if you're looking for information about short-term rentals, you can find a lot of detailed information there and, pl- and where they can reach us. Right, Kyle? Yeah, you can look at some of ours and, and reach out to us. You know, I'm happy to go. Um, we're always both happy to go through all this information concerns with, with anybody who wants to ask because it is a lot to think about. Um, but we like to simplify that and give you all the... We're passionate about it, though, aren't we? We, we almost like talking about it too much, huh? That's yeah. why it's our first topic here. That's why we're sitting here talking about it. But, uh, <laughs> all right. but it's interesting. You know, it's like being in... Uh, a new avenue of investing and, yep. and and having the backing of our of what we've done to experience yep. yeah call it yep. experience right <laughs> yep um yeah so anyways we you know just to kind of wrap this thing up we do and, and to talk about our experience a little bit kyle we do have uh, a ton of short-term rentals on our uh, of our own we've got some that we manage for other people here in the metroplex and like we had mentioned in orange beach so I intend to have more in other markets. Um, we've learned how to manage these in other markets. So we're, we're, not, we're not afraid to do that. We're not afraid to step out and help people with their dreams. If you want one in Costa Rica, you want to be able to fly down to Costa Rica, Costa Rica four times a year, I can help you make that happen. I've got great people down there that, that to partner with. And if you want to convince me to get one on the slopes with you, uh, I love give it. it a try. I'll so. be right there with you. <laughs> hey, great discussion, Kyle. We actually have one of our clients that's doing this right now. Teresa Okoro is here in the studio to share her experience with us. So stay tuned. Look forward to sharing that with you. All right, now it's time to welcome our special guest we have here with us, Teresa Okoro. Thanks for coming, Teresa. Thank you. So um, you and your husband, you guys have been clients of ours since March of 2018, right? Correct. You actually worked with one of our agents, Vicki McCoy. Oh, yes. And you guys worked diligently to find your first properties. And I want to ask you about some of that stuff, but... Teresa, is it okay if I share with our audience a little bit? I want to I want to share your financial journey through your portfolio. Is that all right with the, with you? Yeah, that's fine. That's all right. okay. 
we we bought your um, your first property in March of 2018. That's when we got started. Your current, you're still renting that. You're renting that right now for twelve ninety five a month, right? Isn't that what you're getting for every month? That's correct. Yeah, you bought that back then for a hundred and twenty five thousand dollars. I bet you don't know what that's worth today, do you? No, I don't. <laughs> well, you know what? Because I'm a real estate agent, I pulled this up and I looked to see what the value of that home is for you. It's a hundred and fifty seven thousand dollars. <gasps> Awesome. Isn't that great? Yes, that's Revelations awesome. right here on We Are TPM. I love it. So <laughs> over the past, what is that, two years, you've gained twenty, thirty two thousand dollars $32,000 in equity from that investment. Great job. Thank you. Um, and, and in the meantime, we're, we're, we're making $1,295 a month, right? Yes. Um, you bought a second one shortly after in May of 2018 for 135000 Go ahead, Teresa. <laughs> give me a guess on what you think that property is worth. And I'm referring to, uh, I don't want to say addresses, but I'm referring to the second one that you bought. Okay, I cannot guess. See, that's what you're doing. See, you, I'm you putting all, you on you the all spot. Got this, yeah. I love it. <laughs> One hundred and sixty-five to one hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars is wow. what that one is worth. So you've you've done really well with that one as well in just two short years. So good job on that one. Um, your third property was actually a half duplex, and I'm curious about this. Before I share numbers, mm -hmm. how did you feel when you were you were looking at properties? These first two properties were condos, and they were similar. Similar price range, similar type of property. How did you feel about buying a, a half duplex? It was a little different at the time. That is true. Um, we wanted to do something a little different from the condo. We wanted to do, you know, duplex or a house or home. So that's why, of course, you know, you all helped. You know, when I tell you exactly what we're thinking, you make you made it happen. I mean, by just, you know, talking to us and, you know, letting us know, you know, um, how that could work. So that's one of the reasons anyway, as a matter of fact, because we had no experience at all. <laughs> you know, I'm sitting here listening to you, Teresa, and it's reminding me how coachable you and your husband were. You guys have been such a pleasure to work with. Um, I've learned a lot from you guys. I've met your entire family, and Correct. I probably should have introduced you guys a little bit, a little <laughs> bit more. But, but it's been an honor to serve your family. Your entire you've you've raised some great kids, and I appreciate you sharing sharing your entire family with me and and your investment experience. Um, that third property, that half duplex, we bought that um, for one hundred thirty five thousand in November of 2018. Now, I know you don't want to guess, do you? Uh, no, I don't want to guess. You're done guessing, aren't yes, you? I'm okay, done guessing. all right. Yes, thank 2018 you. was a busy year though, right? Oh yeah, it, it was a busy year, that's right. <laughs> it was. You you were, you were off and running in 2018, $152,000 today. Isn't that great? That is awesome. There's a reason, you guys, why I'm sharing this with you. And there's a reason why I'm going through this exercise with Teresa. We we lease that property for $1,350 a month. Now, you have four properties with us. And the interesting thing about the fourth property is actually the reason why I asked you the last question. Uh, I got a phone call from the owner no, the property manager of that property telling he was asking me questions that led me to believe that they were willing to sell the home. And so we we pursued that, didn't we? We and I and I I called you immediately and I said, Teresa, Ike, I think there's an opportunity to own the other half of the duplex that you've already bought. That's correct. And so Long story short, we made that happen. We bought that home. We purchased it in July of, uh, I'm sorry, August of 2020, right in the middle of, of all our, our COVID Pandemic. craziness. <laughs> now we're getting $1,375 a month for that one. We bought it for $137,000. And just like your other one, it's now worth $152,000. So you've done great. Um, good job. Every step of the way, you've just planted a tree and watched it grow. And that's really 
what this whole wealth building with real estate thing is all about, isn't it, Kyle? It is, and the you know the testament to getting both halves of the duplex uh, really goes a long way into you know your 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 stating numbers that that give the value of of both of them individually. But as as investors, if you know you get a you get a subsequent value for having the entire thing, so it's it's definitely a great step to building wealth for your family. So. We, I brought all this up, Teresa, with you because it, it's, a, it's a wonderful experience I want to share with other people so that they can look and say, look, we could do this. Even in a crazy ascending market that we've been in, meaning a, a market that's rising constantly, you can still win. You could still win with real estate, build wealth in the short term. But really what I want to demonstrate, and Kyle, you know this more than anybody, we talk about this constantly and th this game with investing in real estate is not about the short term. It's not about the cash flow. It's it's about that appreciation and that wealth that you build for your generations to come. And and we were talking a little bit ago, Teresa, and you were talking a little bit about that. Uh, I know Kyle's got some questions for you that that so so that you can share share that with us. But that's really important, isn't it? That's more important to you, I think, than that short-term gain that you get every month. Am I right about that? You are absolutely right. And sometimes it, it, it's, uh, I lost that one. It's Some, okay. Sometimes you lose sight that uh, you don't always get that, that appreciation value in, in a short-term gain as well. So, uh, And no, it's, it's fine. You, you want to do that again? Just do it again. <laughs> just, just start over yeah, and do I it lost, again. I lost okay. that one. You're fine. Um, yeah, and it's it's not every day or every year in every market we can get a short term gain of appreciation like that as you would you know some people focus on cash flow some people focus on appreciation and the fact that you got both just is a testament to the to the great investment there. Yeah, and and it's a, and, and it's I'm sorry. Hopefully, it doesn't convince you to sell the property, <laughs> though, right? So. No, um, you know what I was gonna say is um, it's actually has been a pleasure, you know, to. You know, invest with you all. You are like, wonderful. And, you know, just to think that we have these properties really make me hap makes us happy, myself and my husband. You know, just to know that we own these places. You know, it, usually um, we have nev we've never done um, investment properties before. And this is our first time. And we hopefully we'll, we'll keep on going and going and going. So oh. we hope to do more in the future. Well, tell us a little bit more about that, that I, I guess that feeling, because what a lot of people come to me with is that having a portfolio of properties actually is, you know, something they maybe strive for, but scares them like it's a like it's a liability or something that might come to to get you in the end. And, and you just uh, expressed it as as more of a safe feeling. So is that is that more in line with what you expected before you started? And um, not not what I expected, but. Um, really, but I will say that once we got into it, then we we'll figured it out, and we know for sure. And anybody, anybody that is out there thinking about it, they need, they should do it, and they'll see what I'm talking about. Um, although we had, you know, we had some money, and we, you know, in the bank, and we're just losing the money, you know. We invested in the bank or whatever they're doing, stocks, bonds, whatever, and we're just losing it left and right. And just a little money for the um, for the family. So once we started to invest it in the property, we can see it grow. It's growing, and yet our um, capital is still there. Mm -hmm. You know, we are happy to say that this is here. No matter what happens, we still have that. The capital is there, and it's yielding money for us. That's why I said, you know, we are ready to do more. You know, we can do more and more. With that, again, being um, being a registered nurse, you know, I, mm -hmm. you can go into battle. You, you know what mm -hmm. I mean by battle. You can work in the emergency room or live and delivery. You don't know what's coming through, mm -hmm. um, but you're there because you you know you're strong. You want to do this, and once you do it, you see the, you know, the rewards mm -hmm. of doing that. That's how I feel with you know being an investor or having this investment property. So, it's. Awesome. That's you know one word I can use. It's awesome. I'm not sure if you all are the ones that made it awesome, or if it's just the whole. <laughs> <laughs> We'd like to think we made it awesome. Yeah. Yes. I would think that you all made it awesome, <laughs> or the whole 
investment properties. But I say you all are awesome, wonderful, and we're ready to keep on going. I, I love it. What great enthusiasm, Kyle. Doesn't that fire you up? It Make does you wanna... fire me up. I mean, were you telling me that your bank uh, wouldn't give you 10 to 15 percent uh, you know, yield on your money every year? That's, Are you that's, kidding that's what we're me? Hearing, so. Yes, yes. They gave us like uh, 59 cents. Okay. <laughs> 33 cents. <laughs> well, that's what yes. we strive for, right? Now, yes. So. <laughs> we would like to think that, uh, that, you, it, you, that you wouldn't enjoy it if it wasn't with us, right? So... <laughs> Oh, I love you all. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I missed that one. I love it. It's okay, Kyle. It's <laughs> a beautiful part about what we're doing right mm -hmm. now. We can talk and and uh, and figure it out. Um, Teresa, I I love what you're sharing with us. And one of the things that I got out of that was taking your money. And Kyle and I talk about this all the time. You took your money from somewhere else that wasn't reaping you. You called it the reward. I love that, right? It's a great word. Yeah. Um, it wasn't reaping you what you wanted to see come back out of it. You guys are working hard, right, for a paycheck Absolutely. every single month, and you're saving some of it like most families that are in your position are doing, and they're putting it into a bank. Some people are lucky enough to have a 401K maybe, um, maybe they're putting it into their IRA. There's a lot of different places. Some people, Kyle likes to play in stocks, right? Some people do that. But, but in none of those places can you take your money, have it, have it do what we just described for you as quickly as it did, right? Every single month and, and be predictable, right? Absolutely. Like you know what you're going to get. Yes, Yes, I look forward to that, yes. Um, you know, we have had 401k, you know, from work. Of course, like you said, we do work. We, are, we work for some organization, and we get make paycheck. You know, every two weeks we have a paycheck. We are not like business people out there mm -hmm. making a lot of money. Right. We don't have a lot of money, but we, the one that we have, we want to make it work for us. And what for our family? You know, we have a big family. You know that, right? I, I do. I've, <laughs> met them. I've met almost all of them, I Absolutely, think. Absolutely, yes. So um, we're happy, even with the, um, with the 401k, you know, if you want to get money because you need it for something, you're borrowing it at a very high interest rate, even though it's your money. That's what I always say. It's mm -hmm. my money, but no. And I don't see anything come through. But with these investment properties, I see money every month. Mm-hmm. Every single month, I'm, you know, it's, even if I don't get much or even if I spend some, the property is still there and it has, you know, increased in value. So even if I was to sell it now, I'm going to sell it more than I bought it. So that's the good thing about it. Teresa, I'm going to ask you something a little bit personal because I think it's important for our audience. So if you don't like my question, we'll edit it out. But do you... Do you put the money that we send you every single month? Kyle sends you a statement and wires money to you every single month for your four properties. Do you put that into a separate account that's just for your investment properties? Yes, we do. Yeah. Good. That's really smart. I love to see people, Kyle, you know, I love to see people doing that so they can see what the reward actually is instead of jamming that into their family account, right? That gets spent at Chili's or wherever it is you like to eat, right? Yes. Uh, I, just, I think I just gave a shout out to Chili's. Instead oh, yeah. Of, but, um, but yeah, it, it, it's important for you to be able to see that grow, right? Every single month. So that when you look at that statement, you're like, look, it had, you know, $18,000 in it last month. And now it's got 19000 or twenty, you it's know, whatever 20, that number is, right? Yeah. Yes. And so... I don't know about you, but I like to see my mortgage go down. I like to see my car payment. I like to see that stuff, a very visual person. So good for you for doing that. And thank you for sharing that with us, too. I appreciate it. Well, and I'd like to, you know, touch on that. You, you know, you, you have it separate. And this is something we actually tell, advise pretty much everyone we speak to to do. But it's it's not essentially something we told you to do. So is is there a reason you did that possibly to you know, focus on reinvesting it in the future, or I'll let, let you answer that. Yeah, but. that is, ab Kyle, you, yes, absolutely <laughs> right. I was going to say, Kyle, you are so smart, but, but yes, <laughs> but it is, yeah, because that way you can see it, 
and not only that, I want to be feel happy. I'm a happy person anyway to start <laughs> with. But whenever I want to look at it and say yes, and then if I have to talk to somebody about it, I can actually show them figures and numbers, mm -hmm. and show them look. This is where we started. This is this is the, this year, and this is that. You know, this was hap has happened. You know, so because I do talk to people about go out there invest. Property, you know, investment is a good thing, whether it's long term or short term or whatever. You know, you can start small and then go big. So hopefully, one of these days we will go big. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's the goal: start yeah. small and go big. And yeah. you say hopefully too. So it, it you know, it, I'd imagine it gives you an avenue to look at properties or, or put into your mind what you might want to buy, and you have a direct source to go look at that account and see. Um, you know, we can get that, or this is the mark we need to hit to to get the either the next home you want for yourself or the next home that you want for uh, investment. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And, yes. and I think I think what you're getting at, Kyle, is it also is a a way that provides maybe for your next down payment for your next investment property, right? Like, <laughs> like you may have other sources to do that, but some people don't. So some people. Some people are just saving that money and building it up, and then when they get X amount of money, they're able to go and, and purchase that next property with it, and it helps them. That's correct. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah, it's like diving into a little bit of something we talked about earlier was uh, you know, making your money work for you, right? And you just get to revolve that and let it grow by itself. And Absolutely. So we feel like our money is working for us here. Like I said before, with the bank, it was not working. My money was working for them. <laughs> we been, we <laughs> lost right. a lot of money, not just for the interest, the 53 cents. No, but the one that we did. And we lost hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars so, with investment. Everything was gone. So for this, I know the, the, the property will be there, mm -hmm. is there. So I can actually see it, something that you can touch and feel. It, and you're not even adding in the missed opportunity cost. You probably wish we caught. We I, I think of this as planting a tree, right? You get a tree to be I don't know 50 feet tall by planting it, you know, 12, mm -hmm. 15 years sooner, right? And so the sooner you plant that tree, the sooner you can get it to be 50 feet tall, right? And and so sometimes when you're having this discussion with people, people are realizing, man, I started this in March of 2018. And look where I am. Wouldn't it have been nice if I had started it in March of 2015 or even sooner than that, right? You just took my statement. That's what I was <laughs> just going to say. I'm I was going to say, yeah, but it's good. I'm going to say that we should have started this a long time ago. Yeah. We would have had maybe like 20 yeah. properties by now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're going to share next week. <laughs> Stay tuned in because we're going to share one of our. I don't, one of our funnest stories that we have in our property management company, um, a, 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 I've known these people for quite some time, and it took quite some time before they, before they brought us into the fold, but since they have, they've really grown their portfolio, and, and I'm really anxious to, to introduce them to our audience. So to your point, Teresa, stay tuned because that is a really interesting story. And they are someplace where you want to be, right? That you want your growing toward, right? So everybody's right. at a different stage. Kyle and I talk all the time about um, investing starts with owning the home that you live in. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of people listening right now maybe or or just people wandering around our community that rent their home and they're building wealth for their landlord, right? Correct. So building wealth with real estate doesn't mean run out and go buy yourself a rental property. It starts with buying the home you live in, right? Oh, absolutely. We, we, we knew that. You know, once we were, there was a time that we were renting and we figured out we can actually be paying the mortgage with that rent. And that's how we started. Every home that we live in, we need to buy it. Hmm. Sounds like you, you realize there's two sides of the coin with the, with the you know, building wealth with real estate, essentially, is be, being on the landlord side or the tenant side, which in reality is the you know, giving the wealth or, or building the wealth, right? Absolutely. You just wanted to jump on the train, it sounds like. No. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, just if anybody, if you really think hard about it, because some people are really scared. If you check how much you're, you're paying every month, 
you know, you can use that. You know, I mean, if you talk to a, a good real, uh, real estate people like you all, you all can figure it out for them, for anybody that wants it, and then make it work. It's true, and uh, you know, from my own experience, I've seen that the, a lot of the, you know, you you say you you felt some emotion of being scared. Some a lot of that is build up of of risks or risks in your head that scare you and and every time i talk to somebody about it, it, it you know 90 to 100 percent of those risks don't actually exist in the real world we call those fear-based decisions right kyle yep we we talk about how people make fear-based decisions all the time yeah sometimes they need to talk to real people like me yeah <laughs> that's right that's right, right. It comes down to turning those risks into the it, benefits right. they really are so hey i want to ask you two more questions Teresa. actually i'm going to ask you a question that you already kind of answered so so this is going to be an easy one and then kyle i want you to kind of finish off with her share with me regrets that you have through this process what would you do differently Just to tell you the truth, I, we don't have any regrets right now. The only regret that we have was it was it didn't happen quickly. I mean, it took maybe a week or two. <laughs> it could have taken two days. Right, um, right. No, we have no regrets at all, at all. The re- regrets that we have is that we didn't start this sooner. Mm-hmm. There you go. That's what I was looking for. That's where I thought you were going to go with mm-hmm. this, and, and I love it. So, so good. Kyle, do you have do you have a final question for Teresa? Uh, yeah, I do, and you know you may have touched on this a little bit already, but um, just some advice that you could you could give the audience of of well, just some advice that you can give the audience listening about r- real estate investing in general, or, or possibly reinvesting and in, in how that, uh, or possibly just reinvesting. I can rephrase the question. Yeah, Let me redo please, that. Please, yeah. Start, uh, start that over. And you're answering John's question. So, yeah, I do. Yeah. Okay. The RE th- really threw me off. So, <laughs> right. um, yeah, I do. And you may have already touched on this a little bit earlier, but do you have any advice for our listeners about um, real estate investing? Um, yes. You know, like I said before, if you can do it, the sooner you do it, the better. You will not regret it. You know, if you, you had listened to us and see what I said earlier, again, you know, there are different types of investment. We did a short term and we did long term. And if you talk to these folks, um, the share group, they will really um, advise you and show you. In fact, they will work with you to whatever that you need. So I would say, go ahead and do it. You will not regret it. We don't regret it. We are really happy. Like I said, I wish we had done it. 20 years ago. <laughs> well, years that, that seems to be the motto for Teresa, huh? Just <laughs> It seems to be just, <laughs> let's do more, and let's we should have done it sooner, we right? We should have done it sooner, yes. I love it. <laughs> hey, you, one more thing. You touched on something. Kyle, I, I would love for you to share with the audience. When when her second property, we, uh, we had a long-term tenant in there, and when that tenant moved out, you and Teresa really set down the path of doing short-term renting, which happens to be what our topic is today, which is the reason why, one of the reasons why we brought Teresa in here, um, because she actually has incorporated, when I say short-term rental, I'm referring to Airbnb, VRBO, that, that type of thing. Um, she's incorporated that into her portfolio here, which, which I personally think is really smart not to do as a really large percentage of your portfolio, but it maybe as a small percentage of your portfolio to include that. Kyle, share with us how that came about between, because that was really something that that you and Teresa decided to do and, and a path you, you went down. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Teresa, um, you know this, you were one of my first homeowners that was willing to take that trudge trudge with uh, with me and with us uh, to, to go down the short-term rental route. Um, it, at the time, this was back in 2018. Um, it wasn't it wasn't as common even as it is today to you know one have someone managing an Airbnb for you as a host, but and two doing it at all. Um, but I guess the decisions there to do that was you know looking at profit margins is one thing, but also use case for um, like any investment. You start out with with goals and things you want out of that investment, whether it's real estate or otherwise. And um, this this 
avenue gave us the ability to, um, I call it usability, but you you still make your cash flow, your profit, your your appreciation just as you do from a rental, but you get that added benefit as an owner that you don't get otherwise of being able to use your unit, um, not just when when it uh, you know yearly tenant turns over, um, but you know, when you have family come into town that comes yes. in and uses it. <laughs> that's what I was going to say. That Actually, that's how we started because um, we, I, we were having families come to town and uh, we have that, you know, that uh, unit. And, and we thought, and some, sometimes we want to use it if we're going, going to the games or whatever, you know. So we wanted to have that space available to whenever we need to use it. Family coming to town, friends coming to town, stuff like that, and uh, and sometimes we want to get away from the kids, just run away and hide. <laughs> <laughs> and correct me if I'm wrong. The reason you you bought it was actually for that reason, correct? That was the, that was the reason. Um, <laughs> our son was having um, was having a wedding, and there's a lot of people coming to town, and we're not sure. You know, they say in the hotels, but there's some close family that we want to. To, for them to stay close to us. There's people coming from Europe, you know, Africa, you know, Canada, everywhere. So we needed another place where we can host some people and have some, you know, just to host them. So that's how we, we started with that, so that we can have it open. And whenever whenever our kids come to town, because some of our, most of our kids live out of town. When they come to town, we want them to be in a nice, safe place. We don't want them to, because they don't, sometimes they don't want to be in our house with, you know, the parents. They want to be somewhere else. And we don't really want to know what they're doing either. So that's how we started. So we have that that unit, which is still like that. Anytime we need the unit, we just let you know, and then it will be open for us to use. So we kind of have it both ways. It's being rented and making money, and then we're using it too on our own. And if and if I remember right, that conversation actually, um, ironically, went with you giving me a call and telling me, "I'm sorry, Kyle. I'm not. We're not renting this one out." Um, and then you described those reasons to me, and that's what led us down this this Absolutely. path of, uh, you know, like we always say, let's let's um, let's achieve your goals, but let's still achieve your investment goals right, as well. So your vision was having some place for your kids to stay when stay. they came to visit you. So yes. they weren't they weren't coming home, but they were coming close to home, right? Yes. Because I know how you love your kids, but yeah. but <laughs> having your grown kids around in your own house sometimes isn't isn't fun, isn't it? It's not fun. Uh, so so because <laughs> you have to make you know Treat them like you treat your little ones. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's not comfortable, right? Not comfortable. It's, it's for, it's for I mean, it's comfortable for comfort. me, but not comfortable for them. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. What a great story. So, yeah, we're going to talk, we, we've talked a lot today about adding short term rentals to your portfolio. So, so sharing that experience with us, Teresa, and how that came about and why that came about is really valuable, and we really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Can I throw something Thank in that you. would go before that go statement? For it. Um, oh, no, I lost it's okay. It. Uh, Go for it. Oh yeah. So I guess to end that that point of the conversation, how do you feel? Did you expect to, I guess, cash flow to the degree, or or, you know, to a degree based on what your goal was when I when I presented this to you? Um, did you expect it to be to? I, I Let's simplify. So simplify that yeah, question. That did you simplified. expect your cash flow to be? what it is, what you've seen. Did you expect your cash flow to be what you've seen out of the property? Let's simplify it like that. Maybe. Say initially, because that, that was okay. more of the goal. There you go. So, um, so, to, to, so, Teresa, to give a last point on that, mm -hmm. um, you know, after making the decision to possibly rent it out and make no cash flow on it, what, what were your initial feelings once, once you were able to get, the, like you said, the best of both worlds? Um, yeah, we're happy. We're happy to have that. You did, you know, when we talked, you did explain all this to us and we figured, you know, that's a good way to, you know, see money come through and still be able to use it. We didn't expect that it would be big thing like this, but we're happy that it is. And like I said before, we are ready to do another short term. Well, let's let's that's put. What she's saving. That's where the bank account's still <laughs> filling. Let's put. Let's put. I'm gonna put. Let's put the money 
you know, the numbers to it so that people understand what we're talking about. This is a property that would probably normally get very close to what your other property does, right? Probably right around 1300 a month. Wouldn't you say 1250, 1300 a month? If we were doing a normal long-term rental situation like we are your other properties. Kyle, you send her a check every month. And I know every month is different because things are seasonal and every month throughout the year is different. What do you think the average that you send over the course of the year to Teresa is? Uh, average on an annual basis, if you look at it per month, is probably, it, it, you know, without looking at the numbers, anywhere from two to 2,500 a month. And, you know, we, you may take those numbers lightly, but when you look at real estate cash flow and investing, um, you got to think of mortgage. You got to think of cost, right? So you, you use the figure 1200. Um, Teresa, I'm not going to ask you what your mortgage is. Let's just use an example of 900 a month. If it was 1200, you'd be getting a $300 cash flow. Well, that's where that, that increase in monthly cash flow makes a, you know, I'm all about the math, makes a huge difference to your pocketbook um, cash flow. Cause after that 900 at 1200 is three, 300 in your bank. Um, but every bit you go over that now is, is more money in your bank. It's not more money towards cost. So. Okay, so I'm going to simplify what you just said. You just went from 300 to $1,400 a month in cash flow. Exactly. That's good. That's pretty good, isn't That's it, Teresa? Good, yes. Do you like that? Do you I like, like it? it. You want us to get more of that for you, don't you? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right. Um, anything else that you want to share, Teresa, about your experience with to share property management um, or investing in general? Um, I would just say something about to share. Um, you all have been wonderful. Um, I know I I learned not to trust people, but I trust you all. And uh, <laughs> um, you're good people. Um, I mean, I will not go out there and find you all. I'm not even sure how I found you all because <laughs> I'll be looking at... I know how you found us. Okay. You called us off of a sign off of my vil, uh, one of my Valley Spring listing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's how. And see what it's turned into? That's a right. Phone call a phone call on a, on a, on a, on a sign yes. turned into this. You're yes. here in the studio with us. And yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong. Before we ever actually did a deal, you came to one of our um, our customer parties customer appreciation yeah. uh, happy hours i don't maybe that was after i don't know if she it did or not but we'll but i can then. tell you that teresa has been to almost everything that we invite her to she is a really really good contributor to all of our events and we really appreciate it i've been to all your events <laughs> um see that's why i i have the time i'm a registered nurse i work still and then i still do all these things on the side so, Teresa, I really appreciate you coming in and helping us with uh, and expanding our topic of, of discussion here a little bit with us and sharing your experience. I hope that it's been valuable to everybody. Um, I want to take a moment. Teresa, you're doing something special right now, aren't you? I am. You are. You're really reaching out of the box and doing something. Like, here's something else. This is a lot like real estate investing, right? How many people on the planet have ever walked through life and said, man, maybe I should be on the city council or on a school board. Well, Teresa, you're a woman of action and you actually went and you're, you're doing it, aren't you? I am doing it. I'm running for the Mansfield School District um, School Board of Trustees, um, place two. Um, and the, which the election will be coming on now, May 1st. Yes, I am doing it because I feel like I need to give back to the community. This is my community. I want to give back. I have the time to give back. I'm interested in the schools. And I said it again, I have six children. They all went through public schools. So I know what it is to be in public school and you know to make the case to succeed and be good citizens and have a good job in the future. So that's why I'm do the reason why I'm doing this. You know, Teresa. In the time that I've known you, one thing I've learned is that you are such a servant. You have such a servant heart, right? Um, that Thank comes you. out. That comes out in your kids. I've met all your kids, and it's clear to me that you imparted that same character and that same value to all your kids. What a wonderful family! You and your husband are really humble people, and I'm really proud to know you. I'm proud to serve you guys in the way that we do. 
And I'm super excited for you and proud of you that you would reach out and do this to serve your community the way you have. It, people don't know it, but but just running for school board, it seems like a pretty simple thing. It's not, is it? It's it's no, a it's not. It's a task. It's a task. But you know, I'm important to the task. Like I said, you know, my training, I, I'm a registered nurse again. Um for many years, almost 40 years, um, has given me, I have the strength and uh, the vision and the passion to, you know, whatever that I want to do, I have that zeal in me to follow through and be good at it. I love it. So if you guys want to learn more about Teresa's journey toward uh, her, her the election here, you can go to um, about mansfield.com there's an extensive interview with all of the candidates there and Teresa's one of them so I would encourage you to go there listen to her interview with Steve Casillo and um, thanks again Teresa for joining us I really appreciate it thank, thank you John and thank you Kyle yes thank appreciate you very it. much for being here Teresa it's a pleasure as always Well, thank you guys very much for tuning into our first episode of We Are TPM. And me and John are very excited to bring you guys more discussions about building wealth um, with real estate and just real estate discussions in general. Um, and next week, we're planning on uh, bringing in a very exciting guest. It's one of our clients and has a very great story and um, just talking about where to get started in your rental portfolio. So tune in next week to see that discussion. Look forward to it, Kyle. Thank you.